Section 15.4 is energy in simple harmonic motion. Let's say I have this block on a frictionless tabletop and it's connected to the wall by a spring. In this middle position, that's when the spring is at its relaxed length. It is not stretched or nor is it compressed. And we'll label from the right side of the cube, we'll call that x equals zero position. Then I pull the cube out to x max position. It stretches the spring. I release it and it oscillates back and forth about the point x equals zero. We know we have energy associated with this motion. That's called kinetic energy. And then we also have energy that gets stored in the spring when it's either stretched or compressed. We call that potential energy in the spring. Let's look more closely at those concepts. The potential energy U of the spring we know is one half kx squared. The position x is changing. We can use our equation that describes the position of simple harmonic motion and plug it in here for x. When we square it, we get one half k x max squared times cosine squared. And then the kinetic energy we know is one half mv squared, again using our equation from simple harmonic motion for velocity, we plug it in for v and square it, and we get one half m omega squared x max squared sine squared. Substituting in for omega here, the square root of k over m, when we square it, we get k over m, the over m crosses off with this m, and we're left with just k. So my, our expression for kinetic energy then is one half k x max squared sine squared. We know that the total energy of the system is the sum of the potential and the kinetic. So let's add them together. Recognize that each term has the same coefficient, one half k x max squared. So I'll factor that out. What's left over here, cosine squared plus sine squared, we know that equals one. So that tells us that our total energy of the system, u plus k, is equal to one half k x max squared. This might seem obvious. Uh, at the maximum displacement of the spring, of course, that is where the kinetic energy is zero because the velocity is zero at the extremes of the vibration. So all that's left at the extremes of the vibration is potential energy, and that's one half kx squared, and the displacement at that end point is x max. So our total energy in the system is one half kx max squared. Let's look at graphing the energy. Here we see two graphs, one as a function of time and one as a function of position. Let's look at these in a little more detail. Let's start with the graph as a function of time. Here is the period right there. T stands for period, and from time equals zero to time equals T, that is one oscillation. So if I start at plus X max, one oscillation includes the mass moving to the left and then back to the right. That comprises one complete oscillation. So at the beginning of the oscillation, at the beginning of the oscillation, I see I have maximum potential energy and zero kinetic energy. And that's what we see over here at the right. That's where the velocity is zero, so k is zero, and the spring is at its maximum extension, so the potential energy is maximum. And that's what we see here. Then as it oscillates through the center point, that will be this position right here. Now the potential energy is zero because the, string, the spring is at its relaxed length here and it's not stretched or compressed. And it's moving with its maximum velocity so it has maximum kinetic energy. So that's this point right here. Then as it oscillates over to negative x max, now we're at half a cycle or half the time that it takes and we see that our kinetic energy is again zero and our potential energy is maximum again as once more the velocity at the extreme is zero, so k is zero, 
and now the spring is at its maximum compression. So it has maximum potential energy, and that's this point in the graph here. Then as it comes back through the middle point, moving to the right now, we have maximum kinetic energy again and zero potential energy. So that's this point on the curve. And then when we get back to our starting point, now we're at this spot once more, and we have zero kinetic energy and maximum potential energy. So notice that potential and kinetic peak twice during each period. Here are the two potential peaks, and here are the two kinetic peaks. This potential peak here counts towards the next cycle. Now let's look at our graph as a function of position. In the midpoint of the oscillation, that's where my potential energy is zero because the spring is relaxed and the velocity is maximum, so the kinetic energy is maximum, and that's the red curve you see here. And the potential energy is zero, the green curve, at the center point. Then at the extremes, I have maximum potential energy in green and zero kinetic energy in red. And anywhere in between, if I were to take a point, say, right here, this value of potential plus this value of kinetic will add to the total amount of energy, which is indicated by this black line. And notice that that does not change, just like it did not change in this graph either. The sum of the energies is constant. So if I chose a point, say, right there, this value of potential plus this value of kinetic adds to this total value E uh, that is the solid black line. 